Hi, welcome to Art of Yoga with Cat Justice. This video is month five in my series of prenatal yoga videos that I've been making. So this is meant to be practiced during the fifth month of pregnancy. And this month you're definitely going to um, feel a lot of growth happening. This is a huge month of growing for the fetus and for your body. Um, so just whatever your yoga practice is like, just honoring that you're going to need some more space. You're going to need to make some more room in your body. And in order to accommodate that growing body, we need to maintain a strong core. So that's the focus of this video is how to find core strength when your belly is getting bigger. Most of us use kind of these muscles that wrap around the belly um, as our main core support. But when those muscles start getting stretched out, we need to find other support. And when we're pregnant, the best place to find kind of deeper core strength is through the pelvic floor. And in yoga, we call it the mula bandha, lifting of the pelvic floor. So that's the first thing that we're going to practice here. So you can sit in a comfortable cross-legged position or sit in a chair if that's more comfortable for you. But you're going to close your eyes. And with the eyes closed, just feeling your breath dropping down into your belly. Let your belly be soft. So that as you inhale, the belly expands and opens. As you exhale, it softens back in. At the same time, stay tall. Feel that little puppeteer string lengthening up through the crown of the head. And just establishing a nice gentle rhythm for your breath. And then as you breathe, we're going to find our mula bandha, or find that pelvic floor, those kegel muscles. So on the next inhale, you're just going to give a little lift to the pelvic floor and see if you can hold that lift for one to three breaths. Eyes can be open or closed, whatever's more comfortable, but you're going to lift the pelvic floor and then try and keep it lifted as you breathe. So we're letting the belly be receptive and fairly soft but we're keeping that deeper core strength through that lift of the pelvic floor. After one to three breaths, then just let it relax. And then trying again. So do at least three rounds, holding that pelvic floor lifted, hold the mula bandha, but make sure your breath can still move. Noticing maybe if there's tension creeping into your neck and shoulders, Think about trying to let that go so that our effort is really drawn down deep into the floor of our core. And then after three rounds of those longer holds for the Bula Bandha, now we're going to do quicker contractions for the pelvic floor, so fast little ones. So now again, breathing comfortably, but just think lift and let go, and then lift and let go, lift and let go, but keep the breath moving nice and soft, nice and slow. If it's hard to take that coordination away from the pelvic floor lifting in, in a quick way and the breath moving slowly, if that's difficult, then you can just think, hold that pelvic floor lifted for one inhale and let it go. And then from here, you can go ahead and let all that energy relax. So now we know how to find our mula bandha. We know how to find some of that deeper core strength. And we're going to use that throughout the practice. So now you can come into child's pose. So coming into a comfortable version of child's pose. Knees can be growing uh, probably further and further apart as your pregnancy advances to make room for the belly to drop down in between the legs. Arms can be forward, folded under your head, or folded back at your sides. And here in child's pose, just feeling your breath dropping down into your lower back, feeling it expand and open on the inhale and soften back in on the exhale. And then on an inhale, gently rise up to hands and knees. And we're going to move through cat and cow pose. Fingers are spread, whole palm of the hand grounding into the earth. And as you're ready, you're going to exhale and curl the tailbone under, undulate up through the spine for a rounded cat. 
Inhale as the tailbone lifts, gentle arch to the back for a sway back cow. Moving at your own pace, exhale as your back rounds as you push. Inhale as your back gently arches, feel the hands gently pull towards your knees. Moving with the breath. And just feeling as you go that sensation of letting the belly soften and drop in cow pose and then drawing the belly in and up in cat pose. A little bit of softening in cow and then finding that deeper strength in cat. From here, go ahead and come back to neutral. From neutral, you're going to take your right toes, tuck them under, and slide the leg back. As the leg slides back, you get a nice little calf stretch in through the back of the leg and through the plantar fascia, the sole of the foot. And hanging out here, as you feel that stretch in the leg, think about keeping your hips just as they are. So don't let the hips shift or move. And to do that, you're gonna engage some of that deeper core strength. So you'll feel your lower belly draw just gently in and up. Make sure you can breathe as you take some of the weight off that right leg. You might decide to keep the right toes on the ground, that's just fine. Or you can see how it feels to float them, keeping the hips steady. You can see how it feels to bring some weight off of the left hand, and if comfortable, reaching forward. Just stay with the breath. And then exhale, come back down, and we'll do the same thing on the other side. Left toes tuck, slide the leg back. Just feel the stretch for a breath or two. And then as you're ready, you're going to keep the hips just where they're at. You're going to feel that strength drive, draw into the lower belly. The weight shifts off the leg. Leg can stay down, maybe it floats. And then when you're ready, opposite arm. Maybe it stays down, maybe it floats. Feeling the strength from the belly support your back. Make sure you're breathing. And then exhale, coming back down. And from there, take child's pose. Knees are wide and the body softens down. Any variation of the arms. Let go of any stress or tension that's crept into the neck and the shoulders. And then inhale, rising back up again to hands and knees. From here, you're going to tuck your toes under, and we're just going to work with a really um, gentle weight shift from the hands back to the legs. With this weight shift though, what we don't want to do is round the back. So if you think like a little bit of that sway back cow uh, kind of energy, as you draw the lower belly in, engage the mula bandha, lift the pelvic floor, and exhale and shift the hips back, but without curling the spine. And then inhale, shift forward, let things soften. Engage the belly, engage the mula bandha, exhale, draw back through the hips. Feel all that strength draw into your legs and your lower body. Inhale, come forward. Exhale, shift back. You can stay there or you can see what it feels like to maybe float the knees an inch off the floor. It's harder than it looks. Inhale, coming forward. Exhale, engage the belly, the mula bandha, draw back. Maybe float the knees. Inhale, coming forward. And then last one, this time we're going to do all that work, drawing in through the core, lifting, and we're going to take it all the way then up into a downward facing dog. Once you're in down dog, let your head hang, and you can take any little movements that help to loosen the pose up, whether it's walking the feet in place, shifting things around, fingers are spread, but use that strength in your legs to get the weight off your arms. The knees can always be bent to help with that. And then inhale, come forward for plank. You might have to adjust the distance between your hands and feet for plank. 
You're gonna reach back through your heels, lengthen through the crown of the head. If you need support in plank, you can place one or both knees on the ground at any time. And then from here, you can either exhale back to down dog, or you can take a little bit of a push up. So you're gonna exhale, knees, chest, and chin gently lower, and keep the elbows at the sides as you inhale, lift back up. Either way, we're gonna exhale back, downward facing dog, and then child's pose. And then from child's pose, once again, rising back up to downward facing dog. Engage the pelvic floor and the legs and the belly to help get you up into down dog. And then from here, go ahead and inhale, lift the right heel to the sky for a half down dog. And then on exhale, stepping forward, and we'll rise up into a warrior one pose. Bending through the front knee, lifting through the arms. The hips are facing straight forward as much as they can. Your front knee is going to bend so that it's right over the ankle. If you can just see the big toe to the inside of the knee, you're probably good. Grounding through the four corners of your feet. Soften through the neck and shoulders. From here, exhale, interlace your hands behind the back. Roll the shoulders and just open out of some tension that might have crept into neck and shoulders. Stay present with your breath. Feel free to hang out here. Or you can take your hands to your hips as we move towards a warrior three pose. First stage is just to shift forward and feel your body kind of line up with the back leg. Feel the lower belly draw in. Engage the mula bandha. You can stay right here or if you want, you can launch off for a warrior three. Trying to keep the hips squared off. So that usually means left hip lowers, right hip lifts slightly. If you have a block handy, and you want to use the block to help you balance, you can. Or you can keep the hands on the hips. From there, keep elongating through the crown of the head as you exhale and slowly step down. Inhale, the arms reach on up. And exhale, hands to the earth, step it back to down dog. You can hang out in down dog or you can take a little flow, inhaling for plank. Exhale, knees, chest, and chin. Inhale, lift back up. And exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, left heel lifts to the sky. Exhale, step forward and building into warrior one. Grounding through the four corners of your feet. Bending the front knee until you can see the big toe. Stay present with your breath as you exhale, interlace, roll the shoulders, and open the heart. Soften the throat, the jaw. Feel free to stay, or you can take your hands to your hips. Do that little angle forward. You can hang out here again, lift the pelvic floor. Lift the lower belly to support the back. If you want, you can launch off into warrior three, moving with control. Now the left hip will lift, the right hip will lower. Feel free to use a block if you'd like, or just keep the hands on the hips. As you exhale, slowly reach through the crown of the head as you find the earth again. Inhale, lift the arms up. Exhale, downward facing dog. Again, feel free to stay in down dog or child's pose or find the little vinyasa. Inhale for plank. You can always do a cat and cow for the vinyasa too. Exhale, knees, chest and chin. Inhale, lift. Exhale, downward facing dog. From here, inhale with the right leg to the sky for down dog splits. Feel the hip open. And then exhale, step forward, and we'll rise up into warrior two. Bending through the front knee again so you can see the big toe. 
Hips are rolling open. Flip the right palm. Inhale up and back for reverse warrior. You can gaze to the top hand or to the back heel, whatever your neck prefers. Breathing into that beautiful opening through the right side. Feel free to stay or exhale for an extended side angle. Let's just do elbow to thigh variation, top arm reaching. Again, feel that support coming from the belly, from the pelvic floor, and then soften the arms and shoulders. And exhale, hands to the earth, step it back to down dog. Can hang out there or flow. Inhale, coming forward. Exhale, knees, chest, and chin, or a cat. Inhale, lift back up or take cow. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg lifts, let the hip open. Exhale to step. Warrior two on the other side. Bend through the front knee, open through the hips. Shoulders are soft. Flip the left palm, inhale up and back, reverse warrior. Staying there or extended side angle, elbow to thigh, top arm reaching. Feel the hips opening outward, feel that lift from your core. Soften neck, shoulders, fingertips. And exhale, downward facing dog. One last vinyasa if you want it, otherwise take child's pose. Inhale for plank. Exhale, knees, chest, chin, or cat, cat. Inhale, lift, or take cow. And exhale, child's pose. And then from here, go ahead and rise up onto hands and knees again. And we're going to take dolphin pose now. So for dolphin, it helps to have skin on the mat. So my sleeves are a little tight. I didn't wear the best clothes for this today. But as much skin as you can get to make contact with the mat, the better. Coming down onto the elbows, wrap the hands around the elbows until your elbows are a little more narrow than your shoulders. From there, interlace and then roll the arms apart and find that little, what we call a skin lock. So now the elbows are shoulder distance. Draw the shoulders away from the ears, tuck the toes, and again, engage the mula bandha, the pelvic floor, to help you lift up into a down dog, or a dolphin. It's like down dog, but with a different arm position. Breathe in here. Feel that delicious opening through the back of the heart. And then from there, you can go ahead and walk the feet back to come into a plank, but with this different arm position. Still grounding through the forearms, shoulders away from the ears, lift through the lower belly. Stay present with your breath. If you really want to challenge yourself, you can see how it feels to lift the right foot for a breath. Lift the left foot. And then when you're ready, knees to the earth and walk it back to child's pose. Let it all go. You can sway the hips side to side, relax the shoulders. And then from child's pose, we're going to rise back up to seated. As you come back up to sit, if it feels like you want a little more support for your back, Sit up on a bolster or a blanket, but otherwise we're going to come into bound angle, bringing the soles of the feet together and letting the knees open out to the sides. From here, you might feel most comfortable to take hold at the ankles, or you could interlace your hands and loop them around your toes. Either way, we're going to lift nice and tall, let your chin just slightly tuck down, so we're not dropping the chin towards the chest, but we're like lifting the chin, almost like we're lifting it up and over, curving it in towards our imaginary Adam's apples. 
From there, once again, lift the pelvic floor. Find your mula bandha. Breathing here. You can stay where you're at, or you can exhale and hinge forward any amount. Just make sure as you're hinging forward that you're not kind of collapsing and rounding to come forward, but that you're lifting. And pregnant bellies are great for this pose because we want to be on this path where the first part of our body to make contact with the earth would be the belly. So the belly is kind of leading us forward, not dropping us back. You might also start to notice that your hips are becoming a little bit more flexible. Right now in the pregnancy, they're starting to release the hormone relaxin into the body, which increases the um, flexibility around the pelvis. We want to be mindful of that. So you don't want to like go, ooh, look at my hips, and like really stretch them out. Just notice that that flexibility is happening, that it's there to help prepare your body for birth, but don't push into it, because it could destabilize the pelvis if we accentuate it. So just noticing it, enjoying it. Inhale, rise back up. And then from there, Uptavishta Konasana, open angle. Taking the legs wide in a nice V. If your back needs some support, you can have the hands back and bend the knees and just hang out right there. Or if it feels good, you can lift through the heart. And again, let the belly lead you forward. Coming into open angle. Nice long spine. Little lift from the pelvic floor. Find that support coming from your core. Inhale, rise back up. And then from here, you can go ahead and come down onto your back. From here on your back, you can hug the knees to the chest. Now, if lying on your back is starting to get uncomfortable, if you're starting to notice like shortness of breath or heart palpitations, don't stay long. Just roll to one side and rest and come back onto your back to rejoin the practice when you feel ready. But we're gonna just take a gentle twist from here. Arms opening out at your sides. Go ahead and lift your hips up and you're gonna scoot them over to the right, one little step. And then from there, you're gonna lift your knees up, feel your belly engaged, draw the belly in slightly as you exhale and let the legs roll to the left any amount. Let the shoulders soften. We haven't done very much twisting at all in this sequence, so if this twist is too deep for you, keep your knees lifted a little bit. That's fine, you can have the feet flat on the floor and the knees lifted, or you can let the knees go. Just make sure that that right shoulder is staying on the earth. Don't let it kind of um, strain away from the floor. Let it relax. You can gaze left or right or anywhere in between. If it feels like the twist is too deep into the belly, again, raise the knees. We want the twist to be more into the rib cage, into the mid back. From there, inhale, come back up. You can first scoop the hips back to midline and then step them to the left. From there, lifting up, engage the belly to support your back. Slowly bring the knees to the right. Any amount, they can be lifted. Left shoulder stays on the ground. You can gaze right or left or anywhere in between. Soften through the shoulders, relax through the ribs. Inhale to rise back up. From there, scoot the hips back to midline again. Go ahead, give the knees just a gentle hug in towards your body without smushing the belly too much. And rock side to side. From here, for Shavasana, you can take a traditional Shavasana if it's still feeling good. Just letting your arms and legs rest out. But I'm starting to get a little bit of those heart palpitations and that kind of shortness of breath if I lie flat on my back for too long. So I'll show you next month, I'll show you the version of Shavasana that we can do lying on our sides. But for this month, we're gonna work on a restorative version of Shavasana. So for this one, a blanket, um, some stacked blankets are helpful, or if you're lucky enough to have a yoga bolster and a yoga block, you can build yourself a little inclined plane. 
Otherwise, just stack up, usually three to five blankets is the right amount, with an extra blanket for under your head. And then you're gonna scoot back so that your sacrum, your lower back, lines up with the bolster. And then you're gonna rest down. From here, let the legs relax. If you wanna add in an extra bolster for under the knees, feel free. Palms face up, closing your eyes. So having this little bit of support under the back helps to take some of the pressure off of our vena cava so that the blood flow can return to the heart freely. Soften through the jaw, the throat. Feel your breath once again drop low in the body, into the belly, and really let your belly soften. So we've done all this work to kind of strengthen our core and to give that support to the belly. And now we're going to just feel the freedom of letting it all go. Let the belly be soft. Let the pelvic floor be soft. Relax any tension out of the shoulders, the jaw. Slowing the breath down. As you allow your body to melt and relax into Shavasana, Stay present with those sensations. If your mind starts to wander away, just gently bring it back to those sensations of the breath, the body. So you can really build that mind-body awareness, that mind-body connection. And you can stay here as long as you want. When you're ready to come out, just gently wiggle fingers and toes. Let those little wiggles just grow and evolve into any kind of organic stretching that feels good. Taking your time before gently bending your knees, rolling to one side. If you've got bolsters or blankets, you can lie straight onto them. you're ready, making your way back up to seated. From seated, once again, balancing heart over hips, head over heart, closing your eyes. Once again, feel the breath drop down into the belly. We don't want to overdo that core strength. So we want to have this time where our belly can really just soften and relax where we're not worried about engaging our mula bandha, where we're letting it all go. Feeling the breath massage those core muscles, giving them this rest time so that when we need them in the future, they'll be there for us. Feeling the lift through the crown of the head, eyes open or closed, but inhale at the hands, float up overhead, palms to touch, Exhale, bring the thumbs to the forehead for peaceful thoughts, to the mouth for peaceful words, to the heart for peaceful action. Om Shanti. Namaste. Thank you so much for being here with me today, for doing yoga in this stage of your pregnancy. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you feel a little more kind of strong and secure in your belly, your pelvic floor, and your back and a little less stressed out in the neck and shoulders. When we really get the lower body working for us, the upper body gets to go to Aruba, gets to take a little vacation. So thank you so much for being here with me and um, stay tuned for next month um, as 
in a couple weeks when I'm into my sixth month, I'll make the video for you. And when you're in your sixth month, hopefully the video will be there and you can find it. Thanks so much. Namaste.